Greetings, my name is Jeff Smith. I'm the minister for the Haymarket Church of Christ in Gainesville, Virginia. You can see our contact information at the bottom of this screen. We'd be glad to hear from you and glad that you've joined us today for this second installment of six on James General Epistle. And so this is section one of the book as it's divided into five sections. This book was written by the brother of the Lord, James, the brother of the Lord. And you might like to check out and see how important he was, how prominent a figure he was in the New Testament times. Use the verses at the right to uh, support the claims at the left about how prominent James was, which just makes us all the more interested in hearing what he has to say. James, the book of James can neatly be divided into five sections, and all of those sections deal with the idea of true religion. And uh, the five sections are, first, uh, true religion endures trials and temptations. Second, true religion consists of doing and not just hearing. Third, true religion displays wisdom, true wisdom, godly wisdom. Fourth, True religion befriends God through humility. We, meet, we need to approach God through humility. And number five, true religion is blessed through patience, prayer, and love. So those are the five sections. And what we want to concentrate on today is the first. True religion endures trials and temptations. And now there are, there are five other points that he makes in this first section, and they all have to do with what uh, true religion endures trials and temptations with. First of all, uh, true religion endures trials and temptations with joy and patience. And that might seem like a contradiction. The last thing you'd have when you uh, encounter a trial. Maybe you thought that uh, when you became a Christian or if you become a Christian, you'd have the words and happily ever, they lived happily ever after applied to your life. But Trials and temptations are common to Christians and non-Christians alike. We all go through trials and temptations, but a Christian can see the process. How it says here that our testing of our faith produces steadfastness, and that our steadfastness, if it has its full effect, helps us to become perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And so with that perspective, we can see the process of our trials making us better, making us stronger, and we trust God to bring a blessing through those trials, and that gives us a different perspective on the trial, and we can handle trials and temptations with joy and patience. Secondly, true religion endures trials and temptations with wisdom, and that wisdom is from God. And it's different, as we're going to see in a subsequent lesson, godly wisdom is a little different than human wisdom, and we've got to, again, have faith that when we ask for godly wisdom from God, he will deliver. We can't have a, a spirit of doubting in that and expect to receive anything. We've got to trust him. And really, when we say to have faith, we're saying trust God. Trust God that he will deliver on the claims that he has made and the promises that he has made. The third idea in this first section is that true religion endures trials and temptations with a proper perspective, verses 9 through 11. It's common for self-esteem to relate directly to wealth. The rich would think highly of themselves and the poor would know that they are lowly. Not so with God. And in verse 9 he says, The lowly brother should boast in his exaltation and the rich in his humiliation. And so a great equalizer. Uh, it is not always money that describes our worth in God's eyes. And, you know, we're all going to die just as uh, the rich and the poor alike. It's a great equalizer, and we shouldn't get caught up in our uh, circumstances in this world. We should have a proper perspective. The uh, fourth item True religion endures trials and temptations with an understanding of temptation. This is chapter 1, verses 12 through 15. We see that it's a process. We know how it works. It's like we can see into the devil's playbook to see how he's going to come after us 
be informed and hopefully avoid the process and avoid the result. But uh, we are not tempted by God. God cannot be tempted, neither does he tempt any man. We are all uh, drawn away by our own desire or lust. That's a desire to do something that is against God's will. And uh, that in and of itself isn't a problem until we've got an opportunity to act on that. That's enticement, the ability to fulfill an evil desire that we're, we're harboring. When those two get together, the lustful desire and an opportunity to do that, then sin can be brought forth. And sin, when it goes unchecked, when it is left to grow and take root in our lives and become dominant again in our lives, can lead to death. And so we need to understand that process so we can avoid it. And then finally, number five in this first section, true religion endures trials and temptations with an awareness of God's goodness. Don't be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. God is good, and we as his creation are good. We seek out a lot of evil things, but we're basically, there's some goodness in us, and ultimately God is good, and he's ready to help us when we dig these holes that are deeper than we can get out of on our own. So we can endure trials and temptations if we trust that God is good and that he cares for us. Well, that's the first section. True religion, five descriptions of it, endures trials and temptations with joy and patience, with wisdom from God, with a proper perspective, with an understanding of the process of temptation, and finally, an awareness of God's goodness. This is the, how James begins this great uh, epistle that he has written in what we call section one. I hope this has been helpful to you invite you to come back and check these out. If you're in the area, Northern Virginia area, come worship with us at the Haymarket Church of Christ. You see our information there, or feel free to contact me with a comment or a question. God bless.